How to create your own nebula effect with animated floating stars in DaVinci Resolve 20. Inside your project's edit window, go to Effects. Underneath Toolbox, select Effects. Go to click and drag a Fusion Composition clip to your timeline. Select your clip and hold in Control or Command if you're a Mac user and press D to change the duration. Here in this example, I will change this from 5 to 20 seconds with each second of screen time consisting of 24 stills by default. Select Change. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. We will first create the space background. Inside your Fusion Nodes panel, select P Emitter. With P Emitter still selected, go to add a P Render tool so that the star particles can be processed by DaVinci Resolve. To add additional vibrancy, with P Render still selected, hold and shift and press space. Use the search box at the bottom of the Select Tool window which appears to find the Glow tool. Select this and go to click on Add. With Glow 1 still selected, select a Merge tool. Click and drag from the grey box alongside Merge 1 to the yellow arrow which appears alongside Media Out 1 to make a connection. Know how the initial three tools are connected to the background node of Merge 1. This will enable the star effect to ultimately be positioned behind your nebula cloud effect. Select either the left or right view underneath Media Out 1 to see a preview of your final effect above the Fusion timeline. Select P Emitter 1. Go to Inspector and underneath Controls to reduce the amount of stars that appear on screen, I will half the value for number from 10 to 5. To apply variation in terms of the number of stars that spawn during the video clip, I will increment number variance from 0 to 1. And to ensure that the space star particles appear consistently long on screen, I will increase the lifespan value here from 100 to 500. We will keep velocity set to 0 as we want the stars to remain in the same place. The floating star effect we will apply with separate nodes later on in this tutorial. To modify the appearance of the stars, select Style, change Style from Point to Blob, and increment noise from 0 to 0 0.35 so that each of the stars have a minor flickering effect during the video sequence. Keep the color set to white. Select size controls. To ensure that the star particles stand out, change size from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. And to have stars appear differently in terms of size, we will add a value for size variance. Here I will change this to 0 0.075. Now go to Fade Controls. To have the star particles fade in during the first 10% of their lifespans, and so that they don't appear abruptly on screen, increment In to 0 0.1, and I will have the stars fade out after 70% of their lifespans by changing Out to 0 0.7. At present, the star particle emission section is located in the middle of the screen in a sphere shape. In order to have the star particles spread out across the whole canvas, go to Region, and change region from sphere to all. Now to work on the vibrancy, select glow, drag your mouse cursor to the halfway point of your fusion timeline so that you can keep an eye on the vibrancy effect as we are going through the glow properties. To prevent the glow from each star spreading out too thinly, reduce glow size from 10 to 1.2 and to intensify the glow of the stars so that they stand out more on the space background, Increment Glow from 0 0.8 to 0 0.985. Zooming into 200% on screen, we can see that the stars appear too circular. Reduce Blend to add feather to the edges of your stars. Here I will reduce Blend from 0 0.2 to 0 0.07. Change the zoom back to Fit to see your whole canvas on screen again. Highlight the Emitter, Render and Glow nodes, and hold in Control and press G to group these. With the group node selected, press F2 to rename this group. For this particular cluster of tools, I will refer to this as Space. And the background for our video is all set. Now to add the floating star effect. Ensure that Merge 1 is selected, and under Inspector, change Apply Mode from Normal to Lighten, so that we can see the star background after we apply the additional nebula effects later on in this tutorial. Deselect Merge 1 by clicking anywhere on the Empty Nodes grid. Hold and Shift and press Space. And go to add an S Star tool. Select the node with either left or right view activated. 
under Inspector and Controls, change points from 6 to 8. And to make the points appear longer, whilst maintaining the original star size, decrease depth from 0.5 to 0.2. Reselect S star 1, hold in Shift and press Space, and go to add an S render tool, just as we did with the P render tool for the space background, so that DaVinci Resolve can process the star shapes. With S render still selected, hold in Shift and press Space once again, and go to add a soft glow tool, which we will use to add gentle vibrancy to the star shapes. With Soft Glow 1 selected and previewed, go to Inspector and underneath Controls, increase glow size from 10 to 30. We will use this glowing shape to create a new particle spawning effect. Go to select a new P emitter tool. To prevent too many stars from appearing on screen, decrease the value for number from 10 to 0.05. And again to add variance to the spawning effect, I will increment the value for number variance to 0.01. To ensure that the floating stars remain on screen for a significant amount of time, I will increment the value for lifespan from 100 to 300. And again add variation to this by changing the lifespan variance number to 25. Increment position variance to 0.1 so that these particles spawn in different locations. To apply movement effect to the stars, select velocity. To have the stars move at a gentle pace towards the screen, Increment velocity to 0.02 and set angle Z to minus 90. At present we are not able to apply the glowing stars as particles. In order for this to be possible, select Style, change Style from Point to Bitmap. You should now see a yellow triangle alongside the P Emitter 2 node. Drag from the grey box alongside Soft Glow 1 to this yellow triangle to make a connection. Select Size Controls. To decrease the size of the stars so that they don't obscure the nebula cloud effect, reduce size to 0.02. And again for variation, I will apply a small value here to size variance, here in this case 0.005. To enhance the illusion that the stars are moving towards the screen, I will have the size of the star particles increase over their lifespans. To do this in the size over life graph, drag the right sided node halfway up towards the top right corner. Go to Fade Controls. I will ensure that the stars spend the first 30% of their lifespans fading in on screen. And so Fade In will be set to 0.3. And then after 40% the stars will start fading out as they get closer to the screen. And so here Fade Out will be set to 0.4. Enabling these particles to gently fade out in the last 60% of their lifespans. And again to establish the point on screen where these star particles spawn from. Select Region to have the particles emit across the screen from around the centre of the nebula cloud effect. Change region from sphere to rectangle. At present the particle emission is limited to a small space on screen. To increase this area, I will increment the values for height and width. Change width to 0.7 and change height to 0.25. And go to add a P render node for processing purposes. Deselect P render 2 by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid and go to add a second merge tool. In order to ensure that these new floating stars appear in front of your space background as well as the nebula cloud, we will need to apply the nodes that make up this effect to the green foreground arrows of the merge tools. Therefore I will first connect the grey box alongside merge 2 to the green foreground arrow of merge 1. Highlight the five new nodes that make up the floating star effect Hold in Ctrl or Command and press G to group these. Press F2 to rename as Floating Stars. Connect this new group of nodes to the green foreground arrow of Merge 2. And to ensure that these floating stars appear on screen, select Merge 2 and under Inspector and Merge, change the Apply mode from Normal to Lighten. Please bear in mind that you won't be able to see your floating star effect just yet, as the second Merge tool lacks a background. We will now apply this background by creating the nebula cloud effect. First select a background tool and maintain the default colour as black. Connect your background node to merge 2. With the background 1 selected, go to add a paint node. Deselect by clicking anywhere on the empty nodes grid and go to add a fast noise tool, which we will use to generate the cloud texture. 
Connect Fast Noise 1 to the blue effect mask arrow alongside Paint 1, so that we are able to use the cloud effect as a paintbrush texture. Select either left or right view underneath Fast Noise to see the cloud effect that you are creating. With Fast Noise 1 selected, go to Inspector and under Noise, apply relevant changes to the noise properties to create your cloud effect. To make the rough cloud edges stand out more, I will increment detail here from 2 to 10. And to have the light and darker sections blending together more, I will decrease the value of contrast from 1 to 0.8. And to reduce the vibrancy of these cloud effects slightly, I will decrease brightness to minus 0.03. To increase the amount of cloud shapes that we see on this particular texture, we need to increment the value for scale. Here I will increase this from 2 to 20. We want the cloud effect to appear static and so therefore we will keep C3 set to 0. Keep the two colours set to black and white. Now return to Paint 1. Hold and shift and press space. And go to add a soft glow tool. To reduce the vibrancy of the glow slightly, decrease gain to 0.57. And to have the glow spread thinly across the canvas, increment glow size from 10 to 100. With soft glow still selected with left or right view, reselect paint 1. Select stroke so that all of your paint effects are applied to each of your frames in your fusion composition clip. Under brush controls, select soft as the brush shape. And adjust the size, softness, colour and opacity as you wish. You may vary this as you apply different colour shades to your nebula cloud effect. Here I will set size to 0.2, softness to 1.5, which will add additional feather around the edges of my paintbrush. With apply mode set to colour, I will choose the relevant shade below, and will start off with a light vibrant blue colour from the basic colours palette, with the hexadecimal code hash 0055FF representing this particular shade. Click OK once you've selected your colour. And to have the nebula cloud blend into your space background more, reduce the opacity. Here in this case, I will decrease this from 1 to 0 0.2. Click on the preview window to paint. Clicking on the same spot multiple times will enhance the intensity of the colour shade, as is done here in the centre. Now to add some different lit patterns to the cloud. Highlight the background, fast noise, paint and soft glow nodes, which make up your nebula cloud. Hold in control and press G to group. With the group selected, press F2 to rename. I will entitle this Nebula 1. Click OK. And with the group node selected, insert a new merge node, where the nebula group is connected to the background arrow. With the nebula group selected, hold in control and press C to copy. Deselect. Hold in control and press V to paste. I will press F2 to rename this new cluster as Nebula 2. And connect this group to the green foreground arrow of the third merge node. Select Merge 3. In order to be able to see the second part of our Nebula cloud over the first one, we need to change the Apply mode under Merge and Inspector from Normal to Screen. Now double click on the second Nebula group to open up the nodes that make up this effect. Select Fast Noise and either left or right view. Double click on the Fast Noise heading underneath Tools in Inspector to reveal the properties once again. To add variation to the appearance of your nebula effect, we need to change the values that are applied to the properties underneath Noise. I wish to add a brighter section to my nebula cloud. In order to make the lighter section stand out from the darker ones more here, I will increment the value for contrast from 0.8 to 1.8 followed by a slight increase in brightness to 0.16. To reduce the size of the cloud segments on the fast noise effect, I will decrease the value for scale from 20 to 5. If you wish to stretch the appearance of your fast noise effect, untick lock X and Y, and ensure that different values are applied to the X and Y scales. You can also adjust the angle as you wish. Again, keep the seed properties set to zero, so that the cloud shape remains the same throughout your video sequence. Select the paint node back in your Nebula 2 group. Select either left or right view underneath Media Out 1, so that you can see a preview of your final effect. The first Nebula cloud effect appears warped on the preview screen. In order to remove this so that the original pattern returns, and so that we can paint a new pattern on top of this, go to Inspector 
and click on the reset icon in the top right corner of the inspector window next to the paint heading. And using the stroke brush once again, we'll add a new pattern as was done with the first part of the nebula cloud. If you wish to enhance the intensity further, simply click on the merge node connecting the nebula groups together, hold and shift and press space, and go to add an additional glow node. Now return to your edit window. We will now add a slow zoom in effect to the video clip. With the fusion composition clip selected, go to inspector and underneath video, ensure that dynamic zoom is activated by clicking on the gray button alongside this. Select the dynamic zoom heading to reveal the ease option currently selected, which should be set to linear. By default, the video may zoom out. In order to reverse this so that we zoom into the nebula cloud, click on swap. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video. Take care.